and welcome to this next talk from Grace Church Sheffield on the Jesus kind of Christmas and we're basing our talks loosely around the first chapter of John's Gospel. Well as we look back over Christmas's past we might think of certain traditions our particular family had. I know one of the traditions in my family going back about 60 years or so was watching my father trying to get the Christmas lights going. Now my father was a great one for Christmas. He used to love to decorate the house with paper chains and other decorations and he was a very good pianist. He was actually a semi-professional pianist. People used to pay him for playing the piano. So at Christmas he'd get on the piano when everybody was gathered after the meal and play and everyone would join in singing songs and he really was the life and soul of Christmas. All he needed was a beard and he'd be Father Christmas himself I think. But Dad was somewhat eccentric in certain ways. Perhaps his son takes after him. But Dad in the nicest possible way was a bit eccentric and one of his eccentricities was in keeping a set of Christmas lights that had definitely seen better days. For one thing, many of the bulbs had been replaced over the years and so there were many odd bulbs in the set. So nothing matched. And another thing was that they were all wired up in series and that meant that if one of them went, the whole lot went out. And so the only way to try and locate the dead bulb was to try and go through the whole set, taking them out one by one and replacing each one in turn. So if they went out, you had to take them down and painstakingly unscrew each one and replace them with a, what you hoped was a good bulb and go through the whole set and hopefully by the end of it they would work. And therefore there were many happy pre-Christmases and even during Christmas itself. There was Dad sitting in a chair, patiently working his way through this string of lights, trying to get them working. And even occasions when he'd get them working and hang them up and then sit down and then they'd all go out again and he'd have to start again. And I can hear my mother's voice saying to him, Eddie, for goodness sake, why on earth don't you just go and buy a new set of lights? Well, Dad and his lights are a very fond memory of Christmas and all the other good things he did. But uh, one of the reasons as Christians we put up lights at Christmas is that Jesus is the light of the world. John's Gospel says, in him, in Jesus, appeared life, and that life was the light of mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. Now, you know, light is precious. Darkness can be al alarming and frightening. If you've ever been in a power cut like we used to have when I was young, and we don't get them nearly so often now, but there used to be a power cut and the lights used to suddenly go out, then there's a tremendous sense of darkness and disorder as people suddenly have to scramble to find a light. <laughs> then perhaps someone would find a match, or in those days a cigarette lighter, and there would be a light and people could see what they were doing, and then perhaps someone would find a candle and light it, and you used to have candles handy in those days because even a small amount of light was a relief. And if you've ever been down a coal mine or a deep cavern where there is absolute pitch darkness, then you know the relief that even a small amount of light can bring. I remember being in a cave where the guide told us he was going to turn the light out so we could experience total darkness. It's amazing for that half minute how everyone seemed to catch their breath. We were totally in the dark and it was quite frightening really even though we knew the light was going on any minute. And the first book in the Bible, Genesis, says that in the beginning the world was without form and in chaos. 
and darkness was on the face of the deep. And then God said, let there be light, and there was light. There was complete chaos. But when God spoke light, the chaos started becoming order and life was, life was possible. Light, of course, or electromagnetic radiation, to give it its more scientific name, is fundamental to life in this universe. Without light, no life would be possible. The Gospel of John links light and life together, the light of God is fundamental to spiritual life. And that first Christmas, the light came into this world by Jesus, bringing with him light and life to all who would believe. Light is also fundamental to us finding our way in what is a very dark world. The world can appear to us to be full of chaos. Where is the light so we can find our way? But talking about the coming Messiah hundreds of years before the event, the book of the prophet Isaiah tells us the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, on them the light shines. Even to the darkest places of the world, the light of God was coming through Jesus that first Christmas. And when we look at the ministry of Jesus, we see him shedding his light upon the poor, upon the outcasts, and upon those who, frankly, many respectable people didn't want anything to do with. We see the light of Jesus utterly transforming lives by healing people, casting out evil spirits, and forgiving sins. But of course, whenever there was light, there are always people trying to put it out. John tells us that the darkness is always trying to put out the light. Right from the beginning of his life, people were always trying to put out the light of Jesus. He was opposed by the religious and the political powers because he threatened them with the light of God. Finally, they nailed him to the cross and they thought they'd put out the light. But God raised him from the dead, and Jesus lives forever, and today the light shines brighter than ever. You know, today more people are transformed by the light of Christ than ever there were. The powers of secularism, communism, various types of religious powers are trying to put out the light of, Christ, of Jesus. But all over the world, that light is shining in dark places, transforming lives. You know, one thing I knew when I had accepted Jesus into my life, that a light had come on. Everything made sense in a new way. Oh, there was a host of things I didn't know then that I know now about the Christian faith. But a light had come on. And I began to see. I guess I was the blind man who Jesus healed. And that blind man in John's Gospel, Jesus healed him. And they said, well, what's he done? How did he do it? And whatever. And he said, well, there's a lot of things I don't know. But I know this one thing. Once I was blind, but now I see. Jesus had healed him and he had seen the light. And may the light of Jesus shine in all our hearts this Christmas. Mm -hmm.